Hey everyone, welcome to the show. I have Mike Patterson here today. He has a YouTube channel called Sasquatch Ontario. He's been interacting with Sasquatch for at least 14, 15 years. I know you had a sighting when you were young, so why don't we call that your entire life? <laughs> But I'm excited to have him on the show. You know, if you've been listening to my show that I love to talk about Bigfoot and we are going to go more into the interdimensional realms with a Bigfoot, which I'm a 100% believer in. And so I'm happy to welcome Mike to the show. Thanks for being here, Mike. Uh, thanks, Tina. I'm, I'm happy to be here. So appreciate having me on. Yeah, so I think I I found you on Facebook because I I have a lot of friends on Facebook that are in the Bigfoot world, and um, I think I saw something you posted that I really liked. So I decided to friend him, and he accepted my friendship request. And then um, then I just asked him if he wanted to be on the show, and he said yes. So here we are. Right on. <laughs> um so if you want me to just get into how it all started yeah definitely uh, it, tell us how it all began well you you mentioned when i was a kid so i was 10 years old i live in ontario canada um, i was 10 years i think i was 10 years old at the time my family was uh, at a chalet for the weekend with with other extended family members, aunts, uncles, grandparents, cousins, that sort of thing. And and we're up near the Bon Echo, Bon Echo Provincial Park region up around that area in a, in a place called Denby, uh, D-E-N-B-I-G-H, I think it's called Denby, Ontario. And they used to have a place called the Swiss Inn. It's no longer there. Um, this is a long time ago. This is... Uh, over 40 years ago. So, um, and my dad had dropped me off up, up the road to do some fishing. And there was a people camp there, a bunch of, it was like a small campground. So there was, you know, quite a few trailers and campers and stuff there. And, and I was doing some fishing. Then it started to get dusk. So I started walking back. I can't remember. It wasn't too far. Uh, maybe it was a, quarter of a mile or something you know I'm 10 years old so my dad wouldn't have dropped me off too far away right so I started walking back I was, I was by myself and I saw uh, um, something standing at the side of the road it might have been a hundred to maybe a couple hundred yards at the most uh, I don't think that far but maybe a hundred yards or so could have even been less it's hard to judge being so long but I did see this thing standing there and as soon as I saw it it turned and took one step and was gone you know at the side of the road into the tree line and I flipped out and I ran back to this campsite and I remember going up to this uh this campfire with this family sitting around and and I, I can still kind of see the looks on their faces of shock because I was pale white. I was white as a ghost. I was traumatized. I couldn't speak. I was trying to speak. I finally got the word help out. And uh, I guess it was the father of the family. He ended up giving me a drive back up the road and dropped me off. But I pointed out where the bear was, you know, and I, I had told everybody I got chased by a bear, which I didn't get chased by a bear. But um, I remember walking into the chalet and I opened the front door and uh, the family that owned it, they had a big German shepherd and it was right there when I opened the door, I practically jumped out of my skin and my I think, uh, sisters were there. My cousins were right there and they all could see that I was traumatized. I was still pale white. And um, that's when, you know, I basically told them it was a bear and, and I buried that till uh it was about 2008 that I was uh, 2007, 2008. I uh, 2007 I started going into the woods on my time off with some good quality camera gear, just looking for good photo opportunities. Love being in nature. Love photographing 
wildlife, that sort of thing. So um, at one point I had this epiphany to start looking for Sasquatch. I don't know where that came from, but at this point, considering what I've experienced, I am quite sure that they had something to do with that. I believe they were watching me. They liked how I interact with nature and interacted with nature. And so they, uh, uh, you know, I, I had this thought and, and then it was, uh, I started looking into this. I went up to this area around the bon, uh, bon Echo region uh, it was for the very first time. And I went with a good buddy of mine. We just went camping for the weekend it, in the morning. I think it was about eight o'clock in the morning. We heard this screaming going on off in the distance coming out of the deep woods on one side of the lake. There was cottages on the other. There's nothing. It's just woods it goes on for a long time. And, and there was uh, there was this screaming that was going on. No, I didn't record it or anything. I wasn't recording at that time. But uh, I, I remember I'd looked something up and I found something that was like the same, same sound. It's like, that's a Sasquatch. And then uh, fast forward a bit to uh, 2008 and I'd made a comment on a video and somebody ended up contacting me because of that and said, hey, you want to go to a spot where there's been some previous activity? And he told me where and I was extremely skeptical because I thought, no. No way. I'm not going to say where it is because I don't want people, you know, running through the place. And uh, But it was in a very unlikely area. I, I always thought one had to go to the West Coast, that sort of thing, but I found it differently. Um, so I ended up, uh, it was about a month had passed, and, and this guy contacted me again and he said well you you know you want to go and i said okay let's do it let's do it this weekend which was october 25th 2008 so i met him at noon um, we used google google earth google maps or whatever it was to uh show me where to uh meet him and i, I met him at this parking lot and he kind of showed me the ropes and it was four and a half hours later about 4 30 in the afternoon i remember it was a drizzly, overcast day. You know, it was just just a slight drizzle, and and he, uh, you know, we were, he was doing some tree knocking, that sort of thing. He used to do all that. I think everybody basically does that when they first get involved in this. And, but at one point, he picked up a fist size rock. He walks up to this big pine, and he smacks it uh, several times, drops the rock, and suddenly I I hear like. Uh, uh, like a it's like a triple really rapid triple chest thump sound and it instantly um uh, it, it just instantly caught me off guard it was it, it, it was a weird sound to hear and because I, I spent quite a bit of time in the woods and i did not recognize the sound and it had a, just a whole weird vibe to it so we stopped and we listened and it was just a few seconds passed, and then I heard three giant guttural whoops that were so huge, so loud, and they sounded so pronounced that I remember thinking, this sound like could speak English. And it sounded 10 feet tall, and my life just changed right there. And I remember this lady come walking up the trail. She come around, we were at, uh, just up from this uh, cross trail, and this lady come walking around the corner up this trail with her little dog because there are homes that border this forest area, roughly uh, just over 200 hectares, the, this patch. And uh, she was closer than we were, so she clearly heard it. And she just had this scowl on her face. I remember that. And we didn't say anything to her, just kind of nodded high. She walked past and and I knew it, it instantly what it was. It was undeniable. You know instantly what it is. When you hear something like this, and then uh, I spent the next two weeks, it just played over and over from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep all day long for months and months, and I couldn't shut it off. And um, it, uh, it, it's just extremely profound effect on me. I, the first two weeks, I was in denial, even though I knew what it was. It, it really affects your whole um, being of 
it, it just doesn't sit right. There's a there's something about their voice that really uh, has an effect. It's 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 hard to describe, but if you hear them in in real time and in person up close, then you know you can understand. But so I spent the next four years going into that area, having numerous occurrences, um, and there's other patches, similar patches in the region. So I would you know go check them all out, right? And I had numerous uh, incidents over the next four years. Um, and that's basically, you know, the start of me getting involved in this subject. So up in, you saw this one when you were 10. So did you really believe you saw a bear or you were just telling that story to people so they wouldn't question what happened? <clears throat> um, I, it's, it's like I'm 10 years old. I just saw a Sasquatch. I don't know what it is. It just blew my mind, traumatized me. And that's what I blurted out bear. And a lot of people actually do that. A lot of people will say they saw a bear walking on two legs or so that's, uh, mm -hmm. that was the first thing. And I didn't really have any, understanding a Sasquatch at that time. I might have known about it because of the Patterson Gimlin footage back in 67. So I'd probably seen pictures and that, but um, it just, uh, yeah, it didn't register with me. It just affected me, you know, traumatized me. Yeah. So you, this place that you heard the whoops, it sounds like a suburb. So it's it's not really an uh, isolated area, correct? No, no. It's uh, I've learned over the years they can go wherever the hell they want to go, and I mean yes. anywhere. Yes, and I'm I know talking it. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I like I live where I live now. I, I have woods behind the house here. I get activity here sometimes. I've moved four times over the years, and the activity has followed me. So it doesn't matter where I go. Once you connect to them, they can mm -hmm. show up anywhere. Yeah. And I'm talking uh, in your living room if if they choose. Yeah. I've I've had incidents happen at home in multiple locations with witnesses. So um, I've learned a lot over the years about who they are. They are a people. They're not an animal. Um, they're an ancient race of uh, highly evolved, the epitome of don't judge a book by its cover. They're, they, they understand consciousness. They can enter human consciousness. Uh, you know, I'm quite convinced they know our thoughts at this point. Mm -hmm. um, it's still, it still, it takes me a while to figure things out through, through their actions and that. Um, I've had incidents happen that have shown me that. And it, it takes a bunch of them to add up for me to, you know, conclude that, okay, 100% they can read my thoughts, that sort of thing. I will not judge by one incident, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I, I'm quite objective. I stay as objective as I can. You know, I'll be the first to admit a mistake if I, if I make one. I've always kept this real. There is zero embellishment. There doesn't need to be any embellishment. Um, so over the years with hundreds and hundreds of encounter incidents, um, I tell people, you know, I get called hoaxer all the time, fake, fake hoaxer, this, all, this sort of thing. You know, there's a lot of that out there. And I tell people, go through my videos, go through, I got a ton of interviews out there, go through all, go through the interviews, go through all my comments, find me a contradiction, find me any inconsistency, go ahead, you won't find anything. And, you know, that comes with speaking the truth because you, you can't stay consistent like that, especially over 10, 15 years, right? Um, it's, people are going to, they're going to look for that stuff to catch you in a lie, right? And mm -hmm. I tell people all the time they can't do it. So I'm well, quite confident. I think people are just afraid and they'll do anything to dismiss it or call you a fake and 
um, because it doesn't fit with their reality, just like it didn't fit with your reality when you first heard those whoops and you just couldn't stop hearing it and thinking about it afterwards. And I think it's it's a crazy concept to have them. They have always been around us. They've always been in forested areas for the most part, even though, like you said, they can go anywhere. And we have been taught that they shouldn't exist, that they don't exist. And they've been there the whole time. I mean, every time you went in the woods, they were probably there. Every time yeah, I was they, in the woods, they're there. <laughs> yeah, they, um, they're all over the world. Um, they, they are so understanding of energy. I, I always say to people, I, I think I coined this term, they are absolute masters of energy. You know, mm -hmm. I've been ridiculed by science for, for saying that, right? And, mm -hmm. and when they say that to me, I thought, you don't have any experience. You don't have a clue what you're talking about. They are absolute masters of energy. The things that they can do, um, they like. I've had so much physical contact. You know, pats in the head. I've even had my my face covered, pokes, and that. And that sh that shows me their invisibility. Mm -hmm. um, they they can materialize and disappear into thin air, and they're not using a device. They're doing this inherently. I, I believe it's uh, they know how to shift their internal vibration, mm -hmm. you know, raise, lower, whatever. They they are flesh and blood, so they are physical flesh and blood beings who are who are masters of energy. There are um, yogis, you know, Eastern culture yogis that have, have been a, been able to uh, show some some of the same qualities. Um, manipulating energy so some humans uh, have shown that they can do similar things what the Sasquatch can do and I believe we all have that potential it just needs to be unlocked and, and taught to us and I've asked them because this has been developed to a, a level of written communication that I've that has happened over the past 10 years. So I've been interacting with uh, the same family for 10 years now. Um, so after that uh, first four years, I think what I think was happening was that I was being trained to experience and, and I, I put a lot of time and effort into it. And then after four years, some information fell into my lap and, and about uh, activity at a private property um, up in the core of the lakes region here in Ontario. And I'd never met these people in my life, didn't know them. Um, it, but when the information first came to me, uh, it, I had a knowing. I knew that this was what I was looking for. I can't explain that. I just knew like a solid, this is what I'm looking for. And I ended up interviewing this couple at their home. And then I got invited to this cottage. Uh, their, their family cottage that they've had for decades there. And I knew from the very first night that they did indeed have Sasquatch activity happening on the property. Um, and I've been at it with uh, the property owner now for the past 10 years. So there's been uh, from September 2012 to March 2015, there were 80 visits in that time and we've had activity on 100 percent of the visits uh, not in just that time since day one so for 10 years which is unheard of and and <clears throat> it's something um what they're able to do like there's as much stuff at this point that goes on indoors as out, if not more it's it's insane you know like we'll uh we like the winter because the prints show up they like to show their footprints and there's numerous family members. We've been given names of about eight or nine family members. Um, there was uh, the most recent visit. We were there for just a few minutes. I, I, I had just shown, showed up 
Um, the property owner was there doing a bit of work outside. So we were, we were outside there and I was still unloading gear from, from my car. You know, we were standing there having a discussion and uh, suddenly a, a print showed up like not far from us, a few feet away. And then there was another print about 10, 15 feet from, from that one, single prints. Um, I was able to cast one. <clears throat> so that was, uh, I, I kind of showed you that earlier. That was that one here. So there was only, yeah. there was only a couple, uh, it's a bit of bright light there. There was only a couple inches of snow on the ground. Um, so this is cast in snow, right? And this is cast in snow too. So this is 16 inches. This is a younger brother. This is Nefetia. This is Ninyanin. Um, I have the names given to me by them. Mm -hmm. uh, Nef gave me his <clears throat> through audio. So I've been recording audio for the past, uh, every visit. Every visit. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of audio recordings with vocalizations and all kinds of stuff over the years. I've built up a quite the lar library of um, s pristine Sasquatch vocals, right? And some of them are uh, recorded indoors at this point. Um, so there's a, they slowly give you, uh, they reveal their presence and, and they give these incidents to show their abilities. And it's something that, um, there's a lot of the same stuff over and over prints, leading prints and that, but they'll do things like um, one visit Neff had left the trackway and I've documented hundreds of prints from multiple family members, same family over the years, 100% of them go nowhere. They'll appear and then they disappear. Sometimes they've had dirt in the feet and then they go away. They, they go clean after they walk a couple steps. Um, I believe they're, um, so anyway, so Neff was, uh, he'd left the trackway and, and I'd noticed it was the same foot, about five feet, same foot, about five feet, same foot. I can't remember if it was left or right. So we'll just say left foot. So left foot, five feet, left foot, you know, five feet, left foot. And I was like, and I was saying, how the hell is he doing that? There's no impact in the snow. So he's not hopping on one foot. I would see the impact from it, you know, the, just the snow. And I couldn't understand. And after some time, I understood that oh, he's choosing to leave his prints because they can leave one single footprint without a trackway in snow. You could have a field of clean white snow. You have a football field of clean white snow, and they could put one, one print right in the middle of it, and that's it. So they can do this. So I, I understood that. He was walking normally, but only choosing to leave one footprint. So this is part of their interdimensional quality. So not so only are um, they invisible, it's almost like they're not physical either. You know? Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they they can show up indoors. And like I said, there's a lot of activity that happens indoors. And I've been sitting at the table and suddenly I get a poke in the back. You know, one of them's right there, but you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. But they just, they show that, that, hey, we're here, right? Um, now, you, you've been around them a long time. So have you gotten to the point where you could feel their energy if they're in the woods with you? It's... It's happened a few times, but I don't, I think most of the time I don't. Okay. Um, like because if I, I, so I, I can feel them because their energy is really strong. Um, and I have I, had, yeah, I have had it happen. I guess if they want you to feel them also, it's intentional. But yeah. now every time I walk in the woods, especially, uh, area i'm not familiar with i try to connect with whatever sasquatch are in the area as a as for respect you know like announcing i'm here i'm your friend you know have, and have you communicated like mind to mind have they 
talk to you that way? I, I have had mind speak incidents. Um, yeah. The telepathy shows up in different ways. Uh, it could be a feeling. It could be an image. It, it could be full on mind speak like I'm talking to you here. The first time they did it to me, I was asleep on the couch at home. It was back in 2013. And they grunted in my head so loud. And I was asleep. Mm -hmm. I shot I shot to my feet instantly. And I was on the phone to Dwayne's like, holy sh you wouldn't believe what just happened. <laughs> and oh, over the years, there's been um, there's been several incidents happen, different forms of telepathy and, and uh, different <clears throat> incidents of mind speak. But there's never been a two way conversation. OK, it's all they're They're very abrupt. I call them fleeting moments because when they show up, they'll show you their presence and it's over. It's. They show up and it's over. It's just like we're here and and they'll let you know. And and then um, and that's what happens with the, the visits too at the cottage. The, there could be 10 incidents in a night, but it'll just come out of thin air suddenly. And, and uh, speaking of thin air, I've seen things come out of thin air with them too. Right? Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a psychic medium, so I can talk to spirit. So anything that's on a spiritual level, I can talk to. So that's not unusual for me. Um, and I went out to Montana. When was this? 2018. And uh, I was with a medicine woman. She took us out in the woods and we were looking at uh, megaliths out there in, in Montana. I don't know if you've heard about it, but we have dolmens and everything else out there. And she took us out there and she said, uh, I was with my friend who's also a shamanic practitioner. And she's like, I'm going to take you to this sacred area. And we're like, okay, we basically follow her anywhere you know, in the woods. And she said, this is an area where the Sasquatch perform their sacred ceremonies. And I was like, oh, you know, is this a good idea? <laughs> Like, should we be going here? And I'm sure if they didn't want us there, we, you know, would have been walked out or whatever. But it was interesting because she took us to this path. And this is National Forest land. So, and she took us down the end of this road and there is a path into the National Forest area. Um, there was no signs, I don't think. So I don't think if you knew, you didn't know where this place was, you wouldn't find it. And we came upon uh, the trail and there's two big stones flanking the trail. And she said, when you, she said, this is a portal. And when you walk through it, you're going to feel it. And so, you know, we both walked through it. We could feel some kind of energy there but it wasn't uncomfortable for us. And we actually stopped there and I sat on the rock because uh, Julie Riders, her name, she talks a lot. So <laughs> we would stop and walk and talk and stop and walk and talk. So we, I just sat on the rock and then she took us to this beautiful grove area and we did sacred ceremony there. And, um, because I can mind speak or I'm telepathic, I was saying that I wanted them to show me that they were there because I know they were there. Obviously, this is their sacred ground. They're not going to let us in or not be there while we're there. And I even said, um, throw a pine cone at me. <laughs> and I just got this vision of a Sasquatch standing in a circle discussing whether they should throw a pine cone at me or not, which I thought was hilarious. But they decided not to because they, because even though I know they exist and I'm friendly with them, they're still a part of you that's intimidated by them. I don't know if you feel this way. Um, not anymore, not at all. Yeah, you don't. But, feel I, but I understand. Yeah, I, I have a yeah. lot of fear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they didn't, but they did live, they did leave me a gift, which was a feather. And it was very obvious. I mean, there must have been one right there. And he, and he or she left it on the ground, right on the trail. 
And I just picked it right up. And I was like, oh, this is a gift. And so I kept it. I still have the feather. <clears throat> but I have had conversations. So when I came back from that trip, I was in the bathroom and I, I did one of my I wonder questions, which sometimes I ask that in my head and I get an answer. So I have to be careful. So I said, I wonder if Sasquatch could come into people home, people's homes. And I got a male voice that said, yes, we can, but we like to ask permission first. And I was like, oh my God, who is this? And so he identified himself as one of the males that was out in um, Montana. And he said he called himself Joseph. And we had, a, I was like, oh, well, I have your attention. So I have questions. <laughs> so we had a back and forth conversation. Oh, nice. Yeah. What did you ask him? Um, he told me that since they're all connected, they all know each other. So I used to spend a lot of summers in New Hampshire where my dad grew up and it was a very rural area. And he told me a story about how he, he they've been basically this Sasquatch in that area had been watching me since I was little up there, which made total sense because I always felt nervous in the woods. You can feel when something is watching you. You can feel it. So I always felt that way, but I just didn't know what it was. I never saw anything. And he told me a story about how when I was a toddler, I wandered away from my parents. And, and there's a big pond behind my grandma's house, which ironically, I never went to all those years for some reason. I mean, I was told it was back there. I never walked back there. But he told me that I walked away and got lost. And the local Sasquatch picked me up and put me back where my parents could find me. And basically my feeling is they wiped my memory of it. And of course I was very small, so I never remembered what happened, but that's what they told me. So they knew me from then. And then, so they know each other. They know their friends, right? They're human friends. And they, of course they, they're familiar with us and our energy. They probably see us, see our energies. And so they, he knew that about me. That's what he told me. Cool. Yeah. They, de they definitely know energy. Yeah. Um, I was given the experience once of, it was back in 2013 and it was a dream. It was a contact dream because they have that ability to make contact in our dream state. And it's not a dream. It is actual contact. They are very conscious of what they're doing. And um, I could, I could feel uh, an older female in my peripheral and she brought one of the children to me that uh, I believe it was either, there's a couple names here, either Ashantia or Anastasia um, at, at about four years old. And I got to hold this little child's hand and I, I could see her face so excited and lit right up and I could feel her emotions run through me like, up through my arm, through my body. I could feel everything she felt. She was so excited, but so freaked out at the same time. And I was even conscious in that state to give my hand a little, you know, just a little shake purposely to get a reaction from her, not to scare her, but to get a reaction. And, and it did. And I remember there was this explosion of, of energy from her that came up through my arm and, and I could feel how, you know, excited and freaked out she was just in just me doing that too, but she didn't let go. And then, and then it was over and let go. And I woke up and I was just like mind blown that showed me how they feel as, you know, as they do. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, they're, they're also understanding of, of all language. 
from what they've told me and and you know this is through written communication and and uh, they've shown me again they gave me an experience of of feeling words with clarity without any doubt as to what was being said but there was the words weren't verbal so it's hard to explain you know it's hard to understand unless you experience it but it's it, it allowed me to understand how they understand how they could understand all, all language you know by by how they feel um, they feel the meaning and, and I asked them that not too long ago too I had that confirmed by them do you feel the meaning of words you know do you understand all my words and they they said yes mm -hmm. yeah I think because they are telepathic there's there's no translation if that makes sense like no matter what being you're communicating with if they spoke another language I still hear it in English yeah you know it's like an automatic translation yeah but not everybody's like that though because some mediums will hear languages that they don't understand but i've never had that problem i've always been able to understand it so what have you learned about sasquatch from your interactions like have they told you how long, where are they originally from? How long have they been here? Have they kind of told you their origin story? Um, I asked them, where do you come from? Where do your people come from? They wrote home here always. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I've asked them how, in my questioning, at one point I've developed the written communication over the past 10 years. Um, started with a little whiteboard out in the woods, ended up on a little notepad outside the front door of the cottage with a crayon, and that's developed to indoors with a chalkboard and a sketch pad on the table with a, with a camera <clears throat> that they've imposed dozens of images onto. But the, um, the, the communication, sometimes I, I remember at one point I was asking a whole bunch of questions, and they had written a whole bunch of stuff on a on the sketch pad and I couldn't understand they were in different language and uh, some of it was in English some of it was in other languages and I'd lost what I you know it, it just got kind of jumbled and um, so I have refined my questioning over the years to uh, more of, uh, so they're able to just give me a yes or no and that which they do for the most part but not always sometimes it's a little more than that um, so the, um, I had asked them, how long do your people live in human years? And I can't remember if the first time I said human years. I think I did. But I said, how long do your people live? And they didn't respond. So I changed my question and I, I rewrote it. And I, I said, do your people live longer than 200 human years? And they put a Y for yes. Um, sometimes they'll say yes, but most of the time now they just put a Y or an N or a Y slash N because I've asked, are you human? And they put Y slash N, yes and no. Yeah. Um, I've asked, uh, so when I asked, do your people live longer than 200 human years? They said yes. So that could be a thousand years or any, you know, uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I changed the question after that. I tried to uh, get more information. I said you know, 300 and 500 years, and they didn't respond to that. So I learned, you know, more than 200 human years. Yeah. And so, yeah, over time, I, it's, it's a slow process, but I do get answers. You know, they mm -hmm. don't answer everything, but I've gotten some pretty crazy responses from them, you know, which is, which are exposing a lot of lies told to us, this mm -hmm. whole system that we're, basically brainwashed to believe from birth you know their answers completely contradict that and some of that stuff i do not want to bring up here it's just it's too it's too much it's too out there so uh oh you could go there <laughs> um, if you want to um it's just that they know what's they know what's going on in this earth as far as what humans are doing to the earth, what bad humans are doing to us, 
what harm they're bringing to us, how they're doing mm -hmm. it. They, uh, they, they know they're manipulating the weather. They know bad humans are manipulating the weather purposely to harm us. Mm -hmm. They know, uh, they know all about this thing going on for the last mm -hmm. couple of years. They gave me a drawing said humans die sad. They, they know, uh, um, they know, they know more about what's going on than we do because of their ability to tap into human consciousness. Right. So yeah. uh, bad humans cannot hide secrets from them. They know. Yeah. Um, they can read your thoughts and your emotions. There's every time you go into the woods, you're, they know everything about you. So I think that's why I always say whenever you're in nature, act like you're being watched because you are. And and Sasquatch is not the only beings, you know, watching us in the woods. And I always behave in a manner that, you know, respectful to nature. And they consider you a friend when you behave that way because they're watching you. You know, so if I'm picking up garbage off the trail, they're appreciative of that because I'm, you know, we're respecting nature that way. I tell that to my daughter, so they get it. They're used to mom <laughs> telling them this stuff. So my youngest is like that. She has this awareness, like respect nature and you're being watched and, you know analyzed and <laughs> read you're being read yeah. so so what if, i'm curious because i listen to a lot of sasquatch stories and i read a lot of books about sasquatch and a lot of people have negative what they think is negative encounters which i think is partly because they're so fearful but i have this theory about sasquatches are they mirroring back what they're getting from that human. So say if someone had an aggressive encounter, it's because they were being really negative or nasty. And so Sasquatch is kind of like, I don't want that here. Get out of here. They, they are tricksters. They have a lot of humor. It's constant humor. Mm -hmm. um, with them. <laughs> they love to mess with us. So as you, as you said, they can read us. So mm -hmm. they know our intention. So, you know, uh, some people who get negative or aggressive encounters, it's either, my thought is, it's either that that Sasquatch or, or multiple, whatever, um, just do not like humans, either that. And those would be the ones I think in more remote regions, the ones that are close to us in proximity. I think they're, I think they're all fine mm -hmm. because uh, they're, they're teaching their children about us. Um, you know, they live close to humans. I think it's both to keep them safe and to teach their, uh, it's funny to keep them safe. So they'll live close to us. Right. <laughs> because I learned they are hunted. They are hunted by military. Yeah. They want them killed off. They want them eradicated. They are a threat because of their ability to tap into consciousness and expose things and um, and uncontrollable. They they live truly free, um, but at the same time they have to hide because they are being hunted. So, anyways, to get back to your question, so it could be a complete misinterpretation you know somebody yeah. gets a rock thrown towards them they think they're being attacked when mm -hmm. it could be just one of them showing their presence you know it's one of the things they do you know they get a tree push over nearby and that might send somebody running out of the woods uh if you go to one of my videos it has the word medley in it sasquatch medley of vocals and activity something like that right at the very beginning of that um play that through some good speakers. There's a tree that comes down about probably, I think it's about a couple hundred feet from my tent and it's dark and I'm by myself and you hear the roots popping and man, that was a big tree. I uh, hit the ground and I was fine. I, you know, you hear my reaction and, and I'm alone in the dark by myself, you know, by myself. And when this happened, I don't know why they did that. They could have been scaring something off for all I know. Yeah. Um, 
the family that I dealt with, it was in that area. I trust them fully. You know, they've never harmed me. And I've had hundreds. They actually, uh, I remember years and years back, there was something, I think it was a story with Janice Carter or something about garlic and that, right? And Sasquatch coming, asking for garlic. And, you know, and I had something happen recently, which was really interesting. I, you know, I have a skin condition. I've been fighting psoriasis for decades, uh, 30 years now. <clears throat> and um, at one point, uh, Dwayne and I, the cottage property owner, we were outside. We come back in. There's a freshly picked bulb of garlic sitting right there, in, you know, where I sit. And it's still got dirt on it. You know, it was just picked. And I couldn't understand, what, you know, why they did that. And I had asked just last visit and because it, it hit me. I said, oh, did you guys give me that garlic to heal me? And they wrote, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just, just for the last couple of days, I've been eating cloves of garlic. So <laughs> Tons of garlic. Thing here on that side of the screen. Now, I've been putting it in soup and stuff, though. But um, Well, so, speaking, uh, of, speaking of interdimensional um, causes for some physical symptoms we have in this lifetime, psoriasis is, means you were burned in another lifetime. Yeah, burned. I eh? Yeah. I don't know if that resonates with you or not. But. Um, no, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I, I'm the kind of guy that likes to, and they know it. I like my physical evidence. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not trying to prove their existence. Yeah. But, but I am, they have given me a mountain of supporting evidence. They have given me so much. It's unbelievable how much they have given. And they continue to give that, mm -hmm. but um, because and they know what I do with it. They know I speak out and I share this stuff, and and they know the shit show that I've had to go through and all the ridicule and all that. And it's 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 not been easy, but you no, know, I'm strong because of all the support they have given me and all the support at this point that definitely um, that I get from yeah um, you know folks like yourself because at the beginning it was. Uh, the balance was it, much more in the negative where at this point it's uh, you know, it's, it's opposite. It's a, it's a lot more positive, but uh, so they, they know I like to get the, the physical stuff. Like I cast that print last visit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and so they're just, giving I, you, they're giving you a lot of evidence, like, because they consider yeah. you a friend. And I will say that if you're having a dream about holding a young one's hand, that's a high honor for a human to have because they feel safe enough to actually let you be near one of their young ones because they're very protective. But the young ones are very curious about humans. I mean, they're, they all, as a whole, they seem very curious, like they can't even fight back their curiosity about us, which is interesting. And it probably goes both ways. We're very curious about them too. Yeah, we're, we're a younger, um, uh, I believe, fully believe there are, they are our ancestors, um, both through DNA, because some humans have their DNA. I don't from um what they told me mm -hmm. and they and they have human dna so they are our true ancestors and i believe there's there there is some science or you know folks at the top the mainstream science that know this stuff they're holding it back they don't want us to know they're our ancestors because they want them gone they you know they want this narrative shoved down our throat there's so much so many holes in our history of human uh, evolution and um Sasquatch are our true ancestors and they uh um there's a one of my videos called above and beyond if you go to the, near the end of that there is a a vocal piece that is just phenomenal and they actually say um we love you which uh, when I heard that just kind of you know put me in tears way back when but the the vocals used to make me quite emotional at times right at this point a grown accustomed to it because I've heard so much of it, but I still, I love it all. It's just, 
Um, when I record and I come home, it's like a Christmas present every time going through audio files. I listen every second. If I record eight, 10 hours, I'm listening to every second of that audio and, and more because I'll go back and listen to pieces over and over. It's like, was that them? I'll open the door or something going into the cottage and there'll be a vocalization, quiet, subtle, right? When I do that, because they, they, they do that a lot, right? They, you scuff your foot, you'll get a vocal. You won't hear it or you'll question it in real time. But when I'm running audio, it captures it. So when I play it back and I'm listening, you know, I, that's where I hear all these vocalizations and stuff. A lot of, a lot of subtle stuff, but, uh, um, they're very, uh, they've really expressed their, their love and their, they're very, comp like for myself, and they're very compassionate. You know, a lot of drawings have hearts and, um, yeah, so they, they really have shown how they feel about me, you know, and even just give me that garlic to, to heal me and, um, help heal me. Just, they continually express you know, how they feel about me. They are very compassionate people. And yeah, I totally 100% trust them. Yeah, they've never given me a reason to be afraid. And I think they've been very careful about not scaring me. Maybe because when I was young, I was so scared, you know, but they're, yeah, they like, they didn't throw that pine cone at me. So um, they didn't feel like, I did catch them in my pictures because I did take pictures in the area. Now I went to a second sacred place for Sasquatch last summer in Arkansas. So there is a crystal digging place called, let me think about what the name of it. It's an odd name. Crystal board camp, I think something like that. It's a town. And the couple that bought it was from California, decided to retire there with total skeptics, didn't have any spiritual experiences. And they go there, they saw lights and UFOs and orbs. And then they started seeing Sasquatch, especially the husband started seeing them. And so he, he's actually on the show too. Like I, I interviewed them, but I met them and they told me that when they, the native American tribal um, representatives would come and show up on their property and tell, tell them that this place was where the peacekeepers would meet. And they would do ceremony there and show up and say this was an important place and this was a sacred place to Sasquatch is what they said. So that was oh. that's the second time I've been in their sacred area. Now we we dug for crystals and they were very their energies were very gentle. Like I'm sure they were watching us, but I never saw anything or felt anything. I felt completely comfortable you know, had my children there. No, but I kept expecting one to walk out of the forest though. <laughs> I never saw anybody. So, um, yeah, no, they're very special. They're very special for sure. And so what do you think the long-term goal is? Like, what do they want from us? Do they, I mean, at one point we were probably friendly with them and understood who they were and what our relationship was with them. So do they want, they want that us again? to wake up? They want yeah. us to wake up. They want us, you know, they want to connect with humans and they are connecting with humans. Mm -hmm. They're doing it on an individual basis. But, um, I think like some people think there's going to be this big disclosure. I don't see that. Uh, I see it as, when they give contact, it's like a baby step progress and they do it over a long period of time. And I see them mm -hmm. um, exposing their existence to humans that they choose, that they choose to connect with. This will not be for everybody. Definitely. You know, most people I think will not get this. It's, it's, it's too out there for them. Like this involves, as you just mentioned, this involves orbs and UFOs. There's a, there's a connection. I've, mm -hmm. I've been witness to orb activity mm -hmm. and some 
phenomenal orb activity uh, purposely, you know, presented to us. Um, there's been UFO incidents that have happened. I've been witnessed. I've had two incidents back in July 2018. Um, Dwayne's had a phenomenal uh, close US UFO incident. Um, there's so there's a much bigger connection going on, and and this stuff is being suppressed by the the powers that be. The you know the feds they don't want us to know this stuff. They the so the I don't know where it's all going because of you know this whole thing going on right now that they're shoving down our throats. But um, they are, and I think they they knew this was coming. They were just waiting, and and they've been connecting to humans. They want us to wake up, and um, where that's going to go, I, I don't know. Uh, they don't like to give a lot of, you know, answers as far as that stuff goes. They're very, they're just as elusive, pretty much, uh, from day one as they are now. Mm -hmm. um, although I've, you know, been given so much experience, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know where it's going, but uh, I'm glad I one of those ones that have you know been contacted by them and and given given the uh, yeah you know as much as experience that they have given me my family thinks i'm dealing with demons you know they're doesn't matter i can talk till i'm blue in the face they won't listen to me they don't want to hear any of it any of this stuff anymore right mm -hmm. and um it's like no 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 this is complete opposite of what you're thinking you know they're lining up for these jabs um, and grateful for them. And I'm doing everything I can to tell them, no, 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 no. You're, yeah. you're being deceived. It's a, a complete deception from, from a demonic, you know, source, but uh, they're, they're, they're too far gone. They, you know, I'm the black sheep of the family. It's like, no, Mike can't be right. You know, <laughs> He was a wild child, you know, a troublemaker <laughs> growing up, a troubled teen. And, you know, I've always had this anger in my, you know, which I finally understood where all that came from. Yeah. It was because my, you know, my inner self knows what's going on. It can, it can feel the, the lies, the manipulation going on from um, government and this entire system, right? It's just one big fat manipulation. But the Sasquatch, they are, they are truth. You know, there are no lies with them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I completely trust them. And so where this is all going, I, I have no idea. I just, uh, I hope um, it all turns out for the, for the greater good. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just glad I'm on this side and, and have the contact that I do. Cause it'll, it gives yeah. me this awareness I would not have had otherwise. Yeah, it's amazing. It's exciting. You know, I'm sure yeah. the communication and the, the evidence they're leaving is exciting. It's fun. It's adventurous. And isn't that why we're here is to enjoy ourselves and have an adventure? Yeah. Yeah. They're very playful. You know, they, they, they like that childlike, um, you know, they, they like that lightheartedness that they are lighthearted people. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't mention yet the marbles. That's something they've used extensively to say the least as an object to show their presence. Um, it's, it's been to the point where we've been witnessed several times now, uh, like they come out of thin air, right. A ports mm -hmm. and literally we've been given hundreds and hundreds, I think by, March 2015, there was about 1,500 of them, and it's been ongoing since. So I, I don't even know anymore. And I, um, <laughs> you mean it, they're giving you marbles? Yeah, yeah. As uh, gifts? Uh, yeah, it's they do it to show their presence. So, but they've allowed and they give information with what they do. So I had an incident where I was sitting at the table um, at Dwayne's cottage, and and I for a second I glanced over to my right where my coat was hanging on the chair um, at the end of the table. And they knew where my gaze was at that given moment. And they um, took that opportunity to allow me to see the moment 
a marble enters this space from thin air. And they did it slowly. So it, it, it first appeared like in the middle of thin air, uh, you know, just in, at arm's length. It, and it appeared and it slowly pushed through into this realm and it popped through like this wormhole and dropped to the floor. And I had audio running outside. It captured my, you know, my reaction in that. But they've done that a few times now where we've been able to see the moment because there's been so many hundreds of experiences where it's like, you know, a marble hits you and you don't see that moment where it comes through. Right. And they did it again where I'm sitting at the table. I had a cup in front of me and they knew I was looking at the top of my cup just for, you know, for a moment. I glanced down at my cup, had my hand on my cup and and they knew I was looking at the top. And then I heard a marble touched the bottom so they did that they waited till i was looking so i would see that it wasn't dropped in from outside that they materialized it inside the cup so i brought you know wow a pie, that's like you know, magic it, tricks <laughs> yeah it's just it's it, it's their understanding of energy you know the, this wow. is all um if you take matter and you break it down to a quantum level it's empty space there are no walls Mm -hmm. So they know how to move through that stuff. There are no walls. It's all, it's, you know, it's when you break it down, right? They are, as I've said, absolute masters of energy. Have so, you asked them about their tree structures? Like, what do they mean? What are, what about the X's that they leave and the little TP type structures? What are, what are the purposes of those? I don't, I don't know. I've documented a lot of those, especially in the, the earlier days of being involved in this, you know, found all kinds of those. And I found a lot of them right along trails that humans will walk a lot, mm -hmm. right there beside. What I think those ones are is like a exposure, you know, them showing their existence to those of us who are curious, curious enough to um, take notice and, and question, you know, like, where'd that come from? Um, you know, a lot of people just will walk by them, not even notice them, not pay any attention. And I believe that's those ones, like I mentioned, that are right there, that are easy to see for us, are are just their way of saying, hey, we're here. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure there's multiple meanings depending, um, and I don't know that. So. Yeah. I'll never That's pretend to know something if I don't know it. Yeah. And I'll and if I uh, make if I'm hasty on something and I or if I learn uh, information that goes against something that I already thought I knew, I'll always you know correct myself and that I mm -hmm. keep this as real as I can, right? So as far as the the meaning of structures, what I just said there, um, I. That's speculation. I right. don't know right. the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe you might want to ask them. Yeah, it's uh, um, when it comes to the questions, like that might be some long, but maybe they'll give a, you know, they built structures uh, um, where, you know, where this property is. And at one point, like I have a spot where I would put my tent. When in the warmer months, in the winter, I sleep indoors. But in the warmer months, I put my tent in a certain spot. And on one side of the perimeter of my tent area, they, there was a sapling. They snapped it off. And on another side, they had built a, a wooden structure, elevated. And that one actually fell down. Then they built a second one. And then a third one, they had leaned some stuff. So they, they basically marked off the perimeter of my tent area with with structures. So I thought that was really cool. Wow. Or maybe it was a form of protection. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. This so is my when, spot. Yeah. So when I first moved to um, my current location outside Charleston, there used to be a lot of woods behind my house. They since cut it down to build more houses. But when I first moved in, there was a huge X right there on the edge of the woods. And I was like, oh, my God, they're here. <laughs> and yeah, I, it breaks I my heart when they wipe the when they do that, when they clear cut. When I see developers clear cut an area. Yeah, I, I 
you know, I don't want to hate anybody, but I hate them. Uh, like anybody that if, if you're going to develop an area, leave the trees and take down only what you need. Mm -hmm. But these people will go in and they'll just wipe it clean. And I, I yeah. really despise those humans. They're yeah. just, you know, they just destroy so many homes and so many animals. They, they destroy the nature. We, we have government shoving this climate change BS down our throat while they're allowing the the logging companies to wipe out all the old growth forests. The number one thing that keeps this planet cool is trees. Meanwhile, they're they're wiping them all out. They're just cutting swaths and, and they poison the, the the earth too when they do this, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, like I'm I'm a I'm an earth guy, man. I'm mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm for the earth. I'm for the greater good of the earth. Uh, you know, as far as the human race goes at this point, I really. Um, you know, pretty disgusted with the, you know, the shape of the earth and what's being done. Like everything's poison at this point, right? Everything. So yeah, that has but to you know, you know what? Like I grew up in New York City, so everything was dirty. All the water was dirty. They would release sewage into the Hudson River up until like the '80s, like raw sewage and. And I thought everything was destroyed. Do you know what I mean? Like, I thought there was no clean water left. There's no trees left. And then when I finally left and started traveling and I see clean water, I get so happy, you know, because I'm like, this place is still thriving, even though every, despite everything we've done to the planet. And I have a lot of dreams about, I had a wonderful dream about clean water. To me, clean water is everything. Like if the water yeah. is clean, then you know the planet is thriving. And I had a dream, it was actually the autumn equinox. And my, I, my husband and I were in Virginia. We used to live in Virginia, but it looked like off the coast. And we were, we landed on the water somehow you know, dreams, you know, you just go with it. And we're, I'm floating on the water on a little float and it's a hundred, I know it's a hundred feet to the bottom of the ocean, but I can see clear down to the bottom. And I remember in the dream, I was so excited. I was like, look at this water is so clean and clear. I can see all the fish, all the dolphins. And I feel like really that was a dream about the future. That we're, we're going to get there. Yeah. It's interesting that you, you know, you mentioned the fish and the water. I have had literally, haven't had one for a while now, but um, at one point I was, it was constant. I was having, I've had literally hundreds of dreams that involved a vessel of, of some sort, like a boat, a canoe, uh, whatever. A boat, water, and fish. Boat, water, and fish. Boat, water, and fish. And it, it's been so much. And um, I don't uh, like. I I don't understand what they were about. Some of the dreams, you know, the water is crystal clear, pristine, and that. And um, I still, uh, you know, I haven't been able to decipher that stuff. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention too, though. Like you take stuff like. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but the Fukushima, when's the last time you heard about that? As far as mm -hmm. I know, that's still pouring into the ocean. You know, mm -hmm. radioactive water, just, it's been constant. They've not, you know, they're not, it's not being cleaned up. It's, it's insane. Um, from what the Sasquatch have shown me, I believe there is, uh, and I'm not going to expand on this, but I've, very much but i believe uh there is land being hidden from us that we're not being told about by by the bad humans mm -hmm. you know the sasquatch are well aware of it and i've asked them i said well why aren't you there why are you here instead um in, instead of this pristine you know place and they wrote here help like we're here to help mm -hmm. here to help humans mm -hmm. and that's why we're and here we're here to help. Well, I like to. Yeah. I like to think so. You know, mm -hmm. Some people don't. Some people don't get that with the, 
you know, when you put this stuff out there, it's uh, can get a bit crazy sometimes, right? Yeah, like the difficult. Bigfoot the Bigfoot community, they're notorious for tearing each other down, but I'm not really part of it. Um, I'm more on the spiritual side. and um, I enjoy talking about things that most people don't like talking about or could not even talk about with people like you. <laughs> well, Mike, I, I, wanted... I consider myself a, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. You go ahead. No, I just saying I like um, with all they've given me, I consider myself a, you know, a truth warrior at this point. Yeah. Uh, because of how much ridicule I've had to go up against and, mm -hmm. And my th my thought, I have so much strength given to me by how much supporting evidence they have given me. I have all the strength in the world. You know, bring on your army. I, I'm still not going to shut up. I'm not going away. Um, no matter what is thrown at me, I will still, you know, share my experiences and what I've learned. And, um, and I think that's part of why they continue to, to give me so much because I do that, you know, I, I stand and then, up. And know. then think about it. You've got powerful friends that whenever you walk in the woods, you'll be safe, you know? I hope protected. so. Yeah. Protected. Yeah, for sure. I've, I've come face to face with a pack of wolves with my girlfriend in the dark, in the woods. Um, that was scary, but we got out of that unscathed. Saved by a water bottle. That was weird. Um, we were, uh, I'd taken her to the spot where I had my first vocal, close vocal encounter. Um, sorry, I got a hair in my mustache sticking in my. Mustache. Oh, they might be touching um, you right now. <laughs> no. no, they're pretty blatant. I, I know when that happens. It's easy oh, they're to pretty tell. obvious. But, but we'd. <laughs> We'd walked into this spot and and there was a lot of wind this night, so and it was blowing against us, so we these wolves didn't hear us. And all of a sudden um, we hear this big howl, and it was right there, it was close, and suddenly this alpha shows up and he's I don't know, maybe 20 feet away from us, he's very close, and there was another one, so there was two of them, one right behind him. And then suddenly two more showed up and, and his, the, the alpha, his jaws were just, just snapping nonstop. And he, uh, it was extremely frightening and mm -hmm. intimidating. There's a lot of, there was a lot of uh, dead fall on the ground. And at one point, I, you know, I told I had some crappy flashlight. And I told my girlfriend, Jen there, I said, well, you know, let's, she, she was very brave. <laughs> Uh, she was closer than I was because when we were walking this trail and, and at one point I told her, okay, let's try to start walking back and, you know, and back away. And I took, I think it was one, maybe two steps at the most. And I landed on my ass. I tripped over a, um, a log. I had a cloth bag in my hand with a liter of water full. Um, I had never jumped up so fast in my life. Like when I went down, she thought that was it, you know, they're coming for us. Mm -hmm. And I jumped up like a, my reaction was just instant down on my ass, instant up. And I did this big, uh, um, this, I took my arm and just swung it around with, by the handles of this bag of water. And I watched it and it went flying through the air. Jen was just in front of me. So she didn't know what was going on. She just saw this thing. As soon as that water hit the ground, I didn't hit the wolf. Um, it hit right beside him, the alpha there. The instant that thing hit the ground, they were gone. I couldn't believe how quickly they just, it was like they disappeared into thin air. It was like, poof, gone, done. And I was like, the hell? And, and we <laughs> made our way back to the car. It, it took a while and it was a pretty scary walk back. But um, another time I had a bear sniff my, I think it was a bear, sniff my uh, tent wall right at my head. That's in Neff's area. And I know I had their uh, Neff's family presence at the time. So, you know, I'm sure they were watching to see if I didn't see the bear, but, you know, it, it sounded 
like how a bear would act, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a beeline, right? It was making all this noise, maybe 100, 150 feet from my tent in the middle of the night, and I'm by myself, and and I and I hear these logs, you know, I can just hear making all this noise. One of those really quiet, still nights, and then it went all quiet. I'm like, okay, where is it? What's it doing? And it was silent again. And then it started up, and that thing came right from my tent, just like beeline right from my tent, and I didn't move until till it sniffed like right here, and then I I you know shifted in my tent and it and it did you know one of those and it was gone ran off, um, you know I had audio running outside so I recorded that right, mm -hmm. so I've had a few moments. Um, you know, being out in the woods there, but uh, so far so good. Yep, you're good. I don't carry a gun or anything like that. I never yeah. carry a gun. I, but we're not allowed to here, right? So yeah. Sometimes I'll have bear mates. Um, and I had a I had an incident where I think I recorded a, a one of Neff's family because I the audio tells me they were right there where this happened and uh, record these deer snorts a deer had come walking through i don't know it was at least one he sounded big by the sound of the snorts and the foot stomps and it was stomping its foot and, and it, at first i wasn't sure what was going on and it was really close to my tent and it was dark and you know and i, and I had the thought that i hope this thing doesn't come running through my campsite and trample my tent right because i'm in it so I had an air horn and I give it a little blast and that dispersed the situation. Um, I got a phenomenal recording out of it. And then uh, I realized after the fact what was going on. I didn't, I didn't know if it had to do with me at first. And, and I realized, ah, it's because ran into one of Ness family. So they had a confrontation and I, you know, basically captured the reaction from the deer when I blasted the horn. So shortly after that, I got the smell of dog crap, faint smell of dog crap in my tent. So I knew it was one of Ness family because uh, a previous visit, we were given different smells and that was one of them. So they, they have shown me that they can turn smells off and on different smells. Mm -hmm. There's been um, like beautiful, amazing wood smell that has happened. It's like, undescribable it's so beautiful and then mm -hmm. some other thing like a breeze some like bathroom spray kind of smell which was weird <laughs> and then there's been like a, a horse or sheep manure smell dog crap smell and also sulfur um so they've given all these smells off and on and they've even streamlined them to the point where Dwayne is sitting at the table i'm right here you know, he's arm length, arm length away from me, maybe just a few inches more. And, and suddenly I get this crazy intense smell and he's smelling nothing. And then they reverse it and they give it to him and, um, and I can't smell it. Right. So they've shown me that, that they can direct they, smells and turn them off and on. Like a light they can, smells. they can direct um, sound too, because you can have a group of people together and or not very far apart and they'll hear a scream or a knock or a growl and somebody else in the group didn't hear it. So they can target yep. their sounds too to certain people. And people are like, well, yep. how do they do that? I'm like, because they're, you know, masters of energy, like you said, you know, they, they're completely awake and aware of their abilities and they, you know, if we lived in the woods all the time, we were one with nature. Can you imagine the things that we could do? Yeah, it seems like um, they're they have the the full capacity of their brain. You know, where we yeah. got this fraction, it seems like mm -hmm. they got it all, and, and mm -hmm. they have developed skills. And um, like I've had even uh, sometimes, you know, take a nap because I'm up all night, so. I'll, take a short nap on the couch you know and go to Dwayne's cottage and and I've even had it where I wake up and I just wake up you know my mind's still foggy and I get a telepathic wood knock it's happened um I've had I'm pretty sure it was telepathic wood knocks here too um mm -hmm. one night 
uh, my girlfriend and I, my, uh, have, my landlord had said uh, he heard some wood knocks earlier in the day. So I told my girlfriend, I said, well, we got to go out there at some point. You know, I just, just out of respect, I go back there. So we went uh, late, like maybe 1, 1 30 in the morning. And we, we walked back there and one of them walked right in front of us, but it was probably about six feet in front of us. He walked right across. And we, at first I heard this, uh, I'm quite sure it was telepathic, yeah. um, triple wood knock. <laughs> And what was funny was when I used to go into that spot where I very first heard that close vocal encounter back at October 25th, 2008, I used to go in there and I would do wood knocks and I would go knock, knock, short pause, knock. That was my signature to say hello, knock, knock, mm -hmm. knock. So when I went back here behind the house that one night, we're standing there, you know, just stand there waiting. And suddenly I hear knock, knock. No, exact same thing I used to do, but it was so clear and it was just in my left ear. And I said to Jen, did you hear that? No. And then suddenly we heard footsteps walking and we saw the leaves kicking up as he walked. And I didn't get this part, but she saw his form. She saw a form uh, like um, whatever translucent form. Mm -hmm. So she got a visual, walked right in front of us. So that was... Uh, I love when that happens when somebody's with me because it's validation. See, I'm not yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Of course. Validation is great. Like if you do enough um, telepathic communication, you can tell what's inside your head and outside your head. If that makes sense. Because yeah. Yeah. just recently, like I'll hear a voice like in my head, like that Sasquatch communicating with me. But there's also sounds that I hear outside of me that I know nobody else hears. And they'll either be with talking the, with the to telepathy. me. They'll either be talking to me or I'll just hear voices, just like a conversation, but I can't make out what they're saying. And I know it's not inside my head. It's outside. And it's not physical you know, from my neighbors talking or whatever. It's not that either. With the, with the telepathy, I find there's a, there's just a, a amazing clarity that comes mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. It's just so clear, just crisp. Um, yeah. But as far as, as far as some of their vocals though, that I've recorded over the years, you know, they'll vocalize right beside us. I've, I've had tongue clucks right in my ear, you know, mm -hmm. do the, that sort of thing. So uh, I've recorded a lot of vocals right beside us. Um, so what is the wood knocks about? Are they announcing themselves or is it a form of communication or language or what are they doing? I don't know. I think uh, I, I don't know what the reasons are, but communication, I would I would. Uh, yeah. You know, speculate that yeah there, it's definitely some form of communication so i have a theory um, mike I, I wonder what you think of this when they portal in and out between physicality and, and the visible realm there is a sound that's made and i'm my theory is that popping sound is them popping into this dimension it's possible i don't know yeah and I say that but because I, I have personal experience with a sound like that, that was me. It just came from me. And it, I heard a clanking sound. The, the only thing I heard is like when you're, you're laying in bed half awake. <laughs> and you, I heard this clanking sound. And what it sounded like was like spoons and knives and forks kind of clanging together. That's what it sounded like. And I asked, I was like, I asked my spirit guides, I was like, what is that? And they said, that's you coming back into your body. And I was like, oh my God, that is weird. And then I thought about the Sasquatch, how they pop in and out and how those popping noises could be them popping back in this dimension. My, um, I, I, an old girlfriend of mine, this is uh, this is decades ago, um, not not when I was going out with her, but uh, she was in another relationship, 
this this was decades ago and her her boyfriend at the time was very much into Aleister Crowley mm -hmm. and she told me at one time and she did no drugs she didn't drink um that she was at home one day and she heard a like a static mm -hmm. static sound mm -hmm. and a reptilian head a re reptilian head appeared um like up near the ceiling and it poked its head through like a portal but she heard like a a, a static, static type yep. of sound mm -hmm. so I had, there was no reason that she would lie to me about something like that. So that, that proved to me, that's like, <laughs> okay, the reptilian thing is real too. Right. Which, uh, you know, I don't get into that, but. Um, that sounds terrifying though. There's uh there's a lot more than just Sasquatch out there. I think that, uh, yeah. you know, that humans are unaware of that have these similar abilities. So. Yeah. Another that's sign. A whole other conversation. Yeah, another sign is if you walk, you know how oftentimes people say, Oh, I didn't hear anything in the forest. No birds, no crickets. That's either a portal or a force field that you just walked into, which I believe Sasquatch also pushes out a force field, you know, around their territory, their area where they don't want humans to come. I, yeah, I could, I could see that um, they can make you leave a leave an area without you even knowing what's going on. That's mm -hmm. happened to me. They can, mm -hmm. they can wipe your memory. Dwayne and I sitting at the table one day. Um, he he uh, looks across the road up into the woods there and and comments on a hairy tree and it just you know I had I had my binoculars, camera, video. I had everything. I used nothing saw it and we're sitting there looking and then we both forgot about it in real time. It basically got wiped in, from our memories. And then when we came back next visit, it came flooding back to us and we both remembered about it. So that was bizarre. Yeah. Um, I've had, I've had way back after my first vocal encounter back in 2008, the very next week I was in an area just down the road. I was by myself this time. And I got the exact same triple chest thump tone. I knew they were right there beside me. I had all my gear. I didn't, you know, back then I was pursuing the photo of a lifetime, right? Um, the, <laughs> now I don't care. Um, yeah. I know what Neff looks, I know what Neff's face looks like anyways. Um, but uh, they made me leave when I heard that tri triple chest thump, down, uh, triple chest thump sound. Um, I knew they were right there. Next thing I knew, I was halfway home in my vehicle driving and mm -hmm. not knowing how I got there. So they they made me leave the area. And, and there wasn't any negativity with it. it they just made me leave. Yeah. So they definitely have these, uh, these abilities. And if you go to the end of my video, this is Sasquatch. There's a phenomenal um, vocal piece of Neff. It's about 530 in the morning and he's... Uh, he just crazy vocalizations, um, but the bird life, you know, the, the sounds of the forest come to life. So, cause a lot of people will say, Oh, the sound, the, the forest goes dead quiet when the Sasquatch are around. So I know yeah. not necessarily at all yeah. there. Um, and that pre that piece will show you right there. Right. Like the, yeah. you know, the amount of bird life going on and what you said that, you know, that, that makes sense to me that I could see that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mike, I want to thank you so much for being on the show and everybody check out his YouTube channel, Sasquatch Ontario. Um, there's really good videos there. I'm going to check out some more videos and I really enjoyed talking with you, Mike. Thanks, Tina. I just want to say too, there's a member of Sasquatch Ontario because there is an organization called Ontario Sasquatch. I have nothing to do with them. I okay. actually came out of Sasquatch, Ontario to spite them because I don't like how they <laughs> operate. <You know>? Okay. <laughs> so, All right. Sasquatch, yeah. Ontario. So check it yeah, out. And, and I also have a website, SasquatchOntario.com. Uh, and yep. um, there's a contact page there if anybody ever wants to reach out to me. And, you know, I'm more than happy to, to speak to you. And I'm on Facebook too. You know, I, I made the account just for um, because of this subject really that's the only reason I'm on there so yep and all that information is going to be on the show notes too so and that oh the Facebook thing that's under Mike Patterson one team yeah. one team uh, so 
anyways yeah okay thanks mike oh good okay all right tina take care thank you very much